Hello there, this is True History Gamer and in this video I'm going to give you a comprehensive guide to hunting in medieval dynasty. You might have already heard that hunting is one of the most profitable early game activities you can partake in. Feel free to watch my video on it if not, but putting money aside it's also a really engaging activity. I'm going to split this guide into three main parts. Firstly talking about the different attitudes that animals can have towards the player, then moving on to discussing which ones are actually worth hunting, and finishing off with how to go about it. Medieval dynasties' wild animals can be grouped into three so-called temperaments that determine how the animal reacts to being approached by the player. Passive animals will just run away. Rabbits, deer, moose, and all birds exhibit this behavior. Skittish animals include foxes, badgers, and lynxes, all of which will run away when approached, but will attack you if you hurt them. Finally, we have aggressive animals. Wolves, boars, wisents, and the mighty bear will attack you as soon as they see you. New players might assume that passive animals will be the easiest to hunt due to the lack of danger, but I found that it's actually easier to take down something that's coming towards you as opposed to running away. Keep in mind that most of the passive animals will out run or even outfly you in the case of birds. So now that we know how different animals will react and most importantly which ones to avoid if you're not up for a fight, we need to talk about which ones are actually worth going after, which animals have the best drops. Well, for this purpose I've grouped them into yet another three categories, this time based on their size, which correlates to the amount of drops. In the small category, we have rabbits, badgers, foxes, lynxes, and birds. Generally speaking, I don't think it's worth the effort going after any of these animals as the amount of drops is very low, pretty much in the single digits for meat, fur, and leather. The only exception to this might be birds, as larger ones especially drop a good amount of feathers, but still not that much in terms of meat. In the medium-sized group, we have wolves, deer, boar, and moose. This group definitely has some animals that are worth the effort, with both boars and moose yielding pretty big drops and not being that challenging. Wolves are not that great individually, but they often tend to gang up on the player, and when you combine the drops of three or four wolves together, you get a very good payoff. Deer are probably the least worthwhile animals in this size category, due to being fast runners and not actually dropping that much. The largest animals in the game are bears and wisents. These are also the most dangerous, and to make matters worse, they are often found in pairs. The rewards for taking either of them down are massive though, with a whopping 80 meat per animal, as well as either 30 fur if it's a bear, or 30 leather for a wisent. Make sure to bring a backpack if you intend on butchering more than one of these on your hunting trip. So what's the takeaway here? What should you hunt? As cheesy as it sounds, it depends on you. If you're a bit of a daredevil and you want the biggest payout, go for bears and wisents, and to a lesser extent, boars and wolves. If you want to roleplay a more typical hunting experience where you stealthily track down your prey, moose are probably the best choice. Let's move on to the exciting part of the video, how to actually hunt. My first tip to improve your hunting is to straight away ditch the wooden spears and get yourself a bow. Any kind of bow will do, but in general the more advanced, the better. Crossbows are also good. They're more accurate than bows, but have a longer reload time. Both weapon types are viable options, but personally I think bows are more versatile and early game friendly. I feel that crossbows are better only if you can take down the animal in a single shot, so as to avoid the long reload time needed for a second shot. This means that you would probably need to have more expensive bolts, which would jack up the total cost. Bows, on the other hand, can be used very effectively even with simple stone arrows. My second general tip is easy to say but sometimes difficult to do. Aim for the animal's head. Headshots deal more damage and are actually not that hard to achieve when you are being charged at, especially by larger animals. Moving on to more specific situations, let's talk about how to hunt passive animals like deer or moose. Firstly, I would advise against targeting large herds unless you can take the animal down with a single shot. If you only wound it and need to chase to inflict more damage, it can be hard to keep track of which animal you hit. It's much easier if it's a small group or just a couple of animals. Once you've chosen your prey, it's really important that you sneak as you approach it. You can do this with the control button by default. This will let you get much closer to the animal before it gets spooked and starts running away. 
If you hit your target, but fail to cause enough damage to finish it off, it will start to bleed, allowing you to track it by the bloodstains on the ground. It's even easier to do this with the tracker skill. Once you get close again, you can have a second shot, or if the animal is severely injured and moving very slowly, you can save the arrows and bring out your axe. What about aggressive beasts then? What's the best way to take them on and live to tell the tale? There are a few tactics that can help you. The main objective is to avoid taking damage from the beast in question. All animals in Medieval Dynasty have a certain range. They will not venture too far from their spawn point. Therefore, a good tactic is to just shoot at the aggressive animal from as far as you can and then run once it starts charging towards you. It will eventually stop chasing and go back towards the spawn point, giving you a chance to shoot again and repeat the maneuver for as many times as necessary. Be very careful if you're doing this though, most of these beasts run faster than you so you'll need to make sure you keep a good distance at all times. Getting the high ground is a much better option. Provided you can find a big enough rock that the animal can't climb on, you can just sit there and shoot your bow at it. This is still not the safest, as it's hard to know which rocks or cliffs are genuinely inaccessible, and obviously this will only work if they are near the animal's spawn point. Thankfully, we have the build a fort option, which I think is the safest tactic at your disposal. You just need to have fences unlocked as well as some sticks. As you can probably guess from the name, this tactic will involve getting your hammer out and building an enclosure around yourself near the animal's spawn point. Any fence type will do, so best to go with the cheapest. Make sure to build the enclosure large enough as you can still get hit if you're standing too close to the fence. You can then shoot your bow from the comfort of your fort until the animal is down. Before you know it, you'll be raking in those hunting trophies, putting them up all over your house. Basking in the glory of your success, you would have probably forgotten about True History Gamer. So why not subscribe now and make sure you don't miss any of my future guides.